here guys and today I'm talking about the concrete quad now what is the concrete quad well in the winter time as the days get shorter and shorter there isn't a lot of time to be able to practice or fly in the evenings well the Houston crew has uh, what they refer to as the night spot an industrial park across town which they have an arrangement where they can set up a track, fly a few packs, and have some fun. Now, I have not in years past made it out to the night track because uh, it's a little dangerous for your quads, right? But I haven't found myself with the time to get out and get some packs on the weekend, so I needed to get some packs. So I didn't want to fly one of my normal race builds there. So what greater opportunity to make a quad that was as low budget as possible, test out a few components, test out some 3D printing, and go out to the night spot. And that's why um, I set out for this project to make the concrete quad. I also wanted to be able to get a lot of these parts during the Black Friday sales and the total Black Friday uh, price if you got all these parts for you know, let's say 12% off I think was the average sale this comes out to about 170 175 bucks for this entire racing quad So I'm gonna go through the components in a second on the video, but first I want to show a quick uh, Sneak peek of the videos that the Houston crew would constantly put out all last year Trying to get everybody to come out and race at the night spot and this was the one that sealed the deal for me guys Okay, so I mean, we at the night spot out here. We just yeah. getting in having fun. I mean, everybody always complaining about the fucking trees, the rivers, the waters, and everything. It's concrete, so fucking what? I break more shit on grass. You need to come out here more. Let's have fun. Yeah, Let's practice us. together on the concrete. This is what that man I'm, ju I'm just saying, you know, truth. it's Speak fun. the truth. And it's nothing on the fucking call. It's, it's yeah, fun. I took my hat off. Took it, his it, hat off. It's fine. I, no jacket. <laughs> he took his hat off. I Look took it. my hat off. So as you can see, after that, I just had to get this built up. <laughs> we'll go through the build, but spoiler, this thing held up better than I could have ever imagined. So here's the concrete quad, guys. And the goal of this, again, was be able to be able to have a cheap build with easily replaceable parts. Uh, and that means parts for the quad itself as well as parts on the quad, such as these motors. That's why I am going for these Hyperlite E motors. E stands for everyone can afford these not eco like some of the other ones out there uh, and these e series motors are beautiful indeed and you can see that to differentiate that from the primary hyperlight line they have reversed the color scheme having the brilliant hyperlight orange uh, which matches the metal mid plate on the floss 3 quite well on the top and hyperlight blue on the bottom couple of other things that I have done to get this ready for concrete is I printed out these feet. Um, I have the ones for the back here still that I still need to put on. Um, and I printed out uh, a spare for myself. They will go on there. In addition to that, I have added a nice juicy capacitor at the back. This is Panasonic's best capacitor that I like to use for all my bills. I believe it's the 1035 um, capacitor on there. I also printed out this camera holder. I wanted a beefier one. I'm using the Runcam Nano 2 in there um, just to keep the costs down. Um, this print didn't come out super great, um, and that's more due to my printing skills, um, but it's pretty strong, and I like that it leaves you a little bit of extra room in there, and it is a fixed camera mount. So since this is going to be taking some hard hits, potentially wanted to keep that beefed up. This is the stock 
This is the stock antenna holder at the rear end. I'm using a very inexpensive real ACC stubby uh, UXII antenna. Now I don't expect that to perform as well as the Luminar Axie, of course, but since I'm racing this on concrete, very close proximity, I'm gonna go ahead and try out this cheap $6 antenna, it's super cheap. Uh, in addition to that, let's go through the rest of the build. I'm using the Racer Star Anniversary, $25 on sale, $30 at full price. ESC, um, that has been tried and true and some of my most longest running builds, I'm running that ESC, so I'm doing that for this one to keep the cost down. This is the Rev, uh, I believe it's the Mellow, Racer Star Mellow ESC that I kind of showed on the channel. Wanted to go ahead and get that up in the build. And the notable thing about this is because I will likely be trying 4.1. Right now it's on 4.0 on this flight controller. This has the built-in SpeedyB, so you can tune very easily in the field as well as switch some of those settings. Then of course we're using the XM Plus receiver on top and an AKK um, race video transmitter. <laughs> what did I say video? Um, so that means that this build comes out exceptionally cheap. Let's just go over the cost. Um, frame $45, motor is $56, camera $18, the ESC $25, the flight controller $28, video transmitter $10, the receiver $12, the antenna $6, the props $3 for a grand total of $203 for this entire build, including the props. Now, as I go out to the concrete spot, the night spot, I am going to also be bringing this battery protector that I generally use all the time, but I'm especially gonna be using it on concrete. It does add a good 12 or 14 grams to your overall build weight, but that is totally fine with me if I can keep my batteries just a little bit safer. You can see this one has seen some action and it's gonna see some more action uh, tomorrow night. The other thing uh, you may notice is I don't have a turtle mode solution yet. I did print this fin. I had a little bit of a hard time getting it to fit on there. So now I have to decide, do I wanna to try to squeeze it on there or print another option? I have basically one shot until tomorrow. So I'll figure out what I'm gonna do there or do I just live without turtle mode for a day? Uh, in addition, um, since it is gonna be some potentially banging around, I'm gonna be bringing a couple of spare arms just in case I need to swap any of these. Also gonna be bringing a spare top plate um, and just see how things goes. I'm gonna be bringing several other quads as backups. This isn't a competitive race, so I'm not gonna be going with the intention of pushing it extremely hard, but anytime you're on concrete, um, you wanna be able to recover from that quickly. So quite pleased with how this build came out. I really took my time to kind of show some of those nice build skills. I used casters. 6337 solder throughout this build as well as my Kester's flux pin to make sure that all my solder joints were nice and shiny and it came out quite good. Um, really like this Floss 3. If I had to do it all over again, do I use the Floss 3 light? I do have one of those coming up on all of that stuff uh, very soon, so stay tuned for that. Now let's go out to the field to see how did this thing hold up. That was fun. Oh, I man. hit that. I, I hit that tree. I, I hit the tree. Hey, I was right behind you. That was a good one. That was a good one. All right. Yeah, I was seeing good videos. Yeah, you should go on the right. Uh, so here is the after footage of the concrete quad after two visits to the night spot. And as you can see, it really doesn't look that different. Stay no damage. Uh, I did a couple of hard crashes upside down like that. And uh, all that I did was just kind of scratch up this motor nut right here, if you can see that. Uh, but everything else, I didn't even lose, <laughs> I didn't even lose one of these antenna holder thingies. These Hyperlite e, e motors, I almost said Eco, they're not Eco. Sergey <laughs> reminded me these are E for everyone because everyone can afford these uh, beautiful motors. And the only thing that I broke during that entire um, session, I actually have been out there twice. This is after the second time. I'm gonna show some footage at the end so you can see uh, the wreckage 
Um, these arm protectors performed and did their job beautifully. The arms still look new. I didn't even break an arm. This fan did crumple, but my printer is not 100% dialed in. But that's like, what? I can replace this for 20 cents. Uh, so no problem at all there. Uh, I basically ran the same set of props almost for the entire both sessions. Uh, each sessions were going really hard. We were just going packs, 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 packs. I probably flew across both sessions 35 packs maybe between the two nights. Um, I did take a couple of spills, but there was no damage. Had a very little slight scratch at the top of one of these prop nuts, but uh, just amazing. So if you want to race over anywhere that is precarious, um, this is a beautiful recipe to use. I'll have links to in the description below for everything that I used. And uh, this is kicking off a new series for me where I'm going to do budget builds. Uh, and the concrete quad is a perfect example of this. Um, you don't have to break the bank in order to race or freestyle. Everything uh, today, especially with the new version of the Betaflight, can fly exceptionally well and feel exceptionally well. I didn't even bother to do very much tuning on this. And you'll probably see that the tune wasn't that good, but I didn't care. I wanted to just get out there, get on the track, compete with my buddies and see who ended up faster. And a lot of these guys that hang out at the night spot all traveled to Temple, Texas to participate in one of those big races. And we were able to set up some elements from that track prior to, and it helped um, Houston to take, I believe, first place, third place, and first place in the sportsman class. So way to go, guys, on that. Um, what are you going to be racing for the 2020 season? I am still going through several options. Got the new 533 switchback. I got the Catalyst Machine Works Raging Droner. I got the Mayday Designed Fusion Frame that I still have in the mix. Um, so many great options, so many affordable options, so many durable and amazing components. What a time to fly FPV, guys. Uh, can you believe that you can get three racing quads built up for a full race season for the price that it would have cost you to get one and a couple of batteries a few years ago. It's amazing how much better everything is and how much cheaper it's getting every day. Uh, if you are wanting to know more about how to build a quad, check out my other videos for the beginner series. And if you want to be able to stay in tune to get these type of sales, build a cheap quad of your own, Join the FPV Sales Alerts group where I am able to help everyone by all the partnerships that I have. Um, yes, a lot of those are affiliate links that, that helps the channel, helps me get new things in for review, um, but it also helps me in order to get larger and larger discount codes, especially for that group. And the codes are not just from Banggood, guys. I have so I also have six partners across the United States and North America, including Canada. So if you're a part of that group, you are likely to save. And if I'm not working with your favorite shop and they have a great sale going on, feel free to go in there and post it. Let us all know. I want to get the cheapest parts so that I can keep flying and stay in the air too. So thanks guys. <laughs>